Fnatic, and now in game number two, they have selected to go on to the red side yet again. Yeah, I like the red side for Invictus Gaming. As we've seen before, they can utilize counter picks for the Shy very effectively or for Rookie and swap those solo lanes around. That might have gotten into Fnatic's head as far as them focusing on getting solo lane matchups so heavily that they kind of drafted themselves into a corner. And it's almost like they prioritize getting high tier picks rather than necessarily considering for the particular lane when they grabbed those two solo laners in the first round. And in the end, they were both comfortable matchups for the side of IG. So I wonder if they'll be a bit more bold in terms of their blue side bands. I don't think IG wants to change up too much. Everything kind of fell into place for them in game number one. Completely agree. Definitely gonna see some changes in the picks and bands. That being said, yes, that sir. game was not determined just in picks and bands. No. We saw a lot of improvements in the Ning as well as uh, Bao Lan, as far as uh, you know, characters that we are looking at for IG uh, and possible mistakes, possible improvements. And that's the thing, the jungle support duo that you were focusing on pre-match leveled up for the side of IG, a sign of their performances in quarters and semis, not so much the head-to-head -head matchups we had in that tail end of group stage. Well, here we go again, game number two in the 2018 World Championship, we're already seeing changes come in as Fnatic is saying, you know what? Ning's got a Camille reputation for a reason. Let's not play against that one here again. LeBlanc and Aatrox also gonna be banned as they were in game number one. IG taking the Victor and the Akali off the table. See if the Rakan ban comes in once again from IG to try to dissuade Zaya Rakan, and it yep. does. So IG, no changes on the ban sides. First big status for Fnatic will be interesting to track. Very unlikely to be the Kai'Sa, even though Jackie Love had a very good game on it in game at number one. There's a lot of flex picks available. There is also the Alistair. They will look over Alistair. This time they're going to first pick the Urgot that they looked over to the second round in game number one. It's still a flex pick. It could still go either top lane or mid lane. You don't know for sure. And Whippo did manage to grab himself a couple of nice fears beyond death in game number one. Unfortunately, they were so far behind. It honestly didn't make them fear beyond much more than a brief inconvenience. But we'll see how that may change here in game number two as Invictus Gaming look to be going for the Alistar yet again. If I'm IG, I always take the Alistar to try to again have that soft answer to a Sivir that we know that Reckless likes to default to. I wonder about the Aurelia that's still available in this game. The Shy has hasn't played it at this tournament, but it does fall into his wheelhouse very effortlessly. All-Star does a really big part in controlling the bottom lane, whether you wanted to go with the scaling marksman or if you wanted to go with an early game and try and use him offensively to set up kills. So definitely remaining versatile here. And we have the takeaway. Now it will be Invictus Gaming piloting the Aurelia. I always love it when one team beats another team on a pick and then drafts it against them the very next game. It's almost like a let me show you how this is supposed to be done kind of pick. And it might even be a reverse matchup depending on if IG want to ban away something like the Lissandra. Of course, flexibility for the Aurelia to go top lane. But we see already the Lee Sin Brahms, a very strong duo of picks here for Fnatic for their own playmaking. We talked about how their jungle support duo will have to emulate what IG showed in game number one. Now you could lock Scion and IG would also have shown both solo lanes, but I imagine they don't want to do that. This is an interesting one. We know Jackie Love plays the Lucian, but there's no saying this Lucian couldn't be going to a solo lane as well. That yeah, is correct. This Lucian very well could be flexed around. I like keeping that in the air. That being said, this would definitely be option number two for the bottom lane as far as with <laughs> Alistar. Uh, definitely a very good lane partner and they can put a lot of pressure out. Well, they're going to ban the Sivir away from Reckless here yet again. They're really wanting to keep him off that champion that he does have the most plays on so far this tournament. Talia banned out now by Fnatic. That was one of those picks that we kind of saw Ning use to break the idea that he's a two trick and he had a very good game on it. So they don't want him to reprise that here as the Tristana will also be banned out by IG. Talia, Javan Foy, he's played, of course, Karagas earlier in the tournament. Those are the sort of picks he moves to or a Zac if he feels he can get away with it. Double ban towards the high tier of his champion pool, though. So jungle is something in a solo lane. That's what IG is looking for. Do they go for something like the Gragas here? Do they really have the ability to do it? They're going to hover it at least. Yeah, I think a more generalist pick here uh, as far as the jungle goes. So you can hold on to the last second, make Fnatic show both of their solo laners, regardless of which one they're going to uh, first before they make the final decision. 
Looks like that Gragas will be locked in there. All right, Fnatic, you've still got to pick yourself a solo lane. You've still got to pick yourself that AD carry. IG was focused on that marksman position in the second half of the band, so let's see where it goes. And it's tricky because you need two lanes that can lane against Aurelia, and you have that Lucian at the back of your mind. Reckless going to jump on the Ezreal here. It's been one of his fallback picks. Does, of course, not get as shut down by the disarm effect that the Aurelia is able to put out. They still need to find that solo lane. The Azir popped off last time against Cloud9. Oh, Definitely yeah. a lot of NA fans who have uh, war flashbacks about that <laughs> one. He's going to bring it out in the mid lane, but what's the result going to be from IG? Caps made expert use of Divide and Conquer there from Azir. Uh, using his ultimate to knock back a lot of melee threats is going to be very key when you're facing something like Aurelia uh, and possible roams from the side lanes. Here we go, though. will be a switch up to the top lane, and we get the Shy on Aurelia versus Whippo Zergot. The Shy on Aurelia, that means rookies on Syndra, and the Lucian will go bottom to Jackie Love to play against the Ezreal of Fnatic. We talked about how we wanted to see changes from Fnatic in the second game because the first game just did not work out at all for them. Are these changes the right ones? They've definitely at least diversified the damage portfolio. Not an all physical damage comp here. Azir with the consistent damage along tied the Ezreal. When they played the Azir in semis, it was a much more squishy comp with an Azir to finish off. This is more of the old school. They have a pretty big front line and then Azir to do consistent damage behind it. I'm loving the rookie Syndra here though because if he's able to force Azir back, Syndra has a great matchup into Azir. Azir's really only way to use his ultimate is to go in aggressively. And if Caps can actually pull off the duo plays with Broxa, that might be one way to subvert what is a bit of a painful early laning phase for the Azir. Plus, because of that lane swap with Aurelia now going top, we have a very different game. These lanes yeah. are so much more volatile than the Urgot versus Scion. Aurelia definitely could depend much more on that jungle pressure, and we could see more action there. And this is more of the champion that people think of when they're talking about, oh, I want to see the Shy pop off. When somebody pops off on Sign, they're like, man, that is a big meatball of a champion. He can't die. Look at all that armor. Oh, my goodness. They just can't kill him no matter how many times they shoot him. But with Irelia, you've got some serious potential for mechanical outplay, and the Shy has absolutely shined on that kind of opportunity. And if you've been waiting on the Shy Irelia, you've been waiting all tournament. First game that he's actually going to be piloting that pick. So going to be hyped to watch that matchup also goes the other way with Ergo just running you down from full health and shredding you. So certainly could swing a snowball match up top. And to some degree, the matchup that if Azir is going to do anything, he's going to have to be aggressive as well. So let's see if the junglers can set them up. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. We're on it for the second time today as the teams will once again draw those lines of scrimmage as we saw in game number one. Broxa again piloting that Dark Harvest Lee Sin. We're going to see how well that plays out for him here this time around up against the Gragas from Ning. See if Broxa can get his team going with some of those big signature Lee Sin plays early on. All right, let's see if we get some vintage Invictus gaming style with three aggressive lanes trying to make their own plays early on. Ning now on the Gragas. You have a couple that options. Um, it is a Predator champion, so early clearing and trying to get early boots to back and then go for a big gank with that uh, cooldown is a very, very strong strategy. We've also seen uh, earlier routes and surprise movements from them to try and catch solo laners off guard and really get the lead in summoner spells. Again, you're not bound to going for that kind of full clear by your boots. You can also try to subvert expectations and make some plays. And what I'd like to see from this game, if I'm going to be greedy and try to kind of hope for something or prophesize something, is Fnatic okay. actually getting some real counter punching. Because if it was a boxing match in game one, it was a very one-sided one. IG, their bread and butter in that big run over domestically, where they went basically undefeated in regular season and spring and summer, only one best of three loss in each, was the fact that from ahead, they are just so oppressive. Winning lanes in a jungler that can take advantage of that. From behind, that's when they've looked much more susceptible. Didn't fall behind in game number one. And like we said in game number one, it was a very different look for Fnatic as well. A team that has, throughout the course of this tournament, almost always been significantly far ahead. And we'll see what they can do now that things have been reset. We're back to that even point can they get themselves to that major lead again? Yeah, I think the first site to fight over is, again, bringing it back to the river because the roaming of the supports and junglers has been so important. And the control wards 
that were purchased very early on in uh, game number one by Invictus Gaming definitely paid for themselves and allowed them to really get a hold on the opener. Here we go, though. The Shy pushed up fairly close to the top turret, and he doesn't actually have defensive vision down for himself. So Broxa and just the threat of Broxa now making a play off the wave. Ning does manage to clear himself three camps, go right back to base, get himself a nice pair of shoes, and now he can utilize the Keystone, get out onto the map and make those ganks happen as mid lane rookie and caps trade back and forth here just a little bit. But last time around, we saw IG get themselves to a point where they were so scary strong by the time Fnatic got to try to team fight them, Fnatic couldn't do anything. And although Fnatic has had some pretty big performances from everyone, the consistent thing about this team is how they play together, how they move as a squad. And we'll see if they can make that happen here in game number two as Broxa tries to go in. But a nice scatter of the week comes out from Rookie to make sure they won't find any more of his health bar. No scatter of the week, so the Rookie special. He was blind picking this champion, a bit out of meta in the second half of summer season. Winning against Yasuo, winning against comfortable matchups for the Syndra. This is ultra comfort for him. And this is very much the sort of game where if they can take it down, this might might just break open the series, so I like him going to Ultra Comfort and a good matchup for Syndra. Both of these mid laners selecting defensive summoner spells for their second summoner spell as well, with the barrier for caps and heal for rookie. Uh, so the junglers do not want to get baited under turrets, looking for that first blood. Ning now making his own pass and dropping his control ward through the river, trying to allow uh, the subsequent version. It's been a very risk-averse path from Ning. He gave up both scuttles to start the game, wasn't looking for any skirmishes, so very much just trying to keep himself relevant. Lane's in a good spot for him. Jackie Love trying to control. Here you can see a bit of a CS lead just because Lucian does have the ability to trade and push the wave unless yeah. Ezreal really gets the game going at level one with his Q. Yeah, Reckless will be fine, just hanging back, farming up a little bit here, and especially with Infernal Drake being the first elemental Drake this time around, I hope we get to see a bit more early action than we saw in the previous game. I mean, these two teams, you guys already talked about how they have the highest champion kills per minute. They're also just two teams that have really fast game times. These guys close out games very quickly. Once they get Barons, it's often only a few minutes afterwards that they win the game oh. as we saw in game number one but top side is going to be Bwipo being on the worst end of a trade here as Ning makes his way into the lane looking to find the gank flash into the body slam into the damage into the kill into the first blood for IG and Ning again able to have an early game impact here makes very good use of those predator boots right up the river into the top lane getting summoner spell flash from Bwipo as well and this is great punishment the timing there to call the jungler, the duo coming in as Whippo's trying to push in the wave. You know he wants to get greedy, push out this wave in an awkward spot for the Urgot. When the reverse was true, the Shy was just fine. This time, when the Fnatic top laner is pushed up, Ning comes in, the body slam flash is perfect, and Whippo nowhere to run. Whippo being picked off. First blood going over to IG, puts them at about a 700 gold lead here. Whippo will make his way back into the lane now, but Ning is making a return visit, and he's making it rather quickly. The Shy going in, tries to find the stun, dash away from Whippo, gonna bumper through the duration. As Shy goes back in, gonna drop the Vanguard's edge. Ning wants to show up here as well, grabbing the kill onto that one. Brox are gonna be taken low, can't show up in time to save the top laner, and that is two for IG. Bottom side is Valon going in to force out a 2v2 here. Flash out from Reckless to keep himself alive. As now they might be looking to turn things back around, but Hillisong is quickly losing way too much health. This top lane situation is exactly what we caution against in Champion Select with the switch of top laners. Top focus gets two kills now for Invictus Gaming. And then bottom lane we just saw their summoner spells blown on their own. And that's the problem. It exacerbates the problem on the top side is that 2v2 Reckless went for a very conservative flash away there. He would have known, of course, the jungle couldn't be bot side. He was showing top side after the successful gank, but he makes the defensive play. It's a sign of where the comms are for Fnatic here. They're feeling defensive. They're understanding that after two kills go in on the top side, things are starting to once again slip away. And I want to harken back to Champion Select, where we mentioned the volatility of the top lane with the way these picks are playing out. When you talk about a volatile matchup, you don't want to see your guy falling significantly behind in CS and going 0-2 in the first six minutes. If you're talking about a volatile top lane matchup, you're inevitably in the same breath talking about the junglers and Ning. 
Dodging action in the start, giving up Scuttle Crabs to get his summoners, his mid lane. Oh, Caps tries to go for the Sharima shuffle, but instead he will be too slow on the trigger. And that means Rookie with a good flash will negate the summoner spell usage from Caps and keep himself just fine. Yeah, flash is traded there. Barrier also used by Caps since the ultimate from Rookie expended to try and threaten him upon getting into turret range. That also has attracted supports. Everybody's roaming down to the mid lane because these are flashless mages here with a lot of damage output and not a lot of escape options. It's going to be a party in mid lane, gentlemen, as Ning and Balan look to clear out some vision, move up towards the mid lane. Hillisong's in some trouble. Caps wants to be close enough to allow Hilly to jump away. He will get himself away for now. The Ooh. cast doesn't hit. Hillisong stays far forward enough punish? to make sure that doesn't happen. And Fnatic are striking back with a punish. Ning gets taken very low, but he will miraculously survive. It pops his potion, 20 HP is enough to keep <laughs> Ning alive. You the crowd rolls for sure. that one, but damn, it was close. That is one where you wipe your brow a little bit, almost went down for missing his ultimate there and not securing the kill. But in the end, everybody does get out, and Broxa has made his way up to the top lane. Broxa wanted to find some help here for his top laner. Shy's going to be taken very low. Sonic Wave not finding the mark. The Shy's still looking to make a kill happen here, but he will not do it. And Fnatic get themselves on the board. Broxa answers back here on the Lee Sin, comes in with red buff, and they get a kill back for the top lane. Ning is going to come to just secure the uh, minions here because there's no teleport for the Shy once he gets back up, and that is a Canyon minion wave. Here's the high octane gameplay we didn't see in the first nine minutes, even though the previous game went pre-30 minutes in the ending by IG. First nine minutes, there were no kills. We get three in the first nine this time, and also as we start the replay here, we see on the top side, Whippo much more comfortable in this matchup, despite the Shy getting two kill involvements early. The ult doesn't end up actually triggering, but Brox is in the right place. And again, a big reason for this gank from Broxa is because Ning just missed his ultimate and was chased out of mid lane. That gives full priority over to the Fnatic jungler to try and make use of the time where Invictus Gaming jungler had to recall, had to pay for his mistakes, and there they do find a reward. And the agency of the jungle and support to impact the game is something actually that Rookie was talking about yesterday in some of the media interviews talking about the fact that he lost, or I should say his team, Invictus Gaming, lost two games in a row because specifically Fnatic sent more members mid and negated his influence. This time IG's given him the backup that he was calling for in the press interview. All that being said, the shy on this Aurelia still with a significant CS lead and a very threatening possibility here <laughs> of running away with it. Syndra is one of the greatest yoink. jungle camp controllers that there is. You just yoink the crab away from your opponent, say, that's my crab. And you don't let Brox even have a chance to smite it away like game number one. They learn their lesson, and there's still 700 gold up compared to Fnatic. But what I'm looking for, what I'm looking at for Fnatic right here is the fact that they are not just letting IG take over things. Broxa striking back at the top side is a good omen for them. And again, it's all about getting to the point where you're on even enough ground to let that five-man team play really shine. And it's also about your fundamentals, because you look, three lanes here are losing for Fnatic when it comes to the carry CS numbers. So very much they need to Double down on the vision. You can see a control one on the top side of the mid lane here. Know where they're strong and actually push for some advantages in lanes because if they all passively lose out in the CS department, one team fight goes the way of IG. You can't be surprised if some of those jungle camps, let alone CS, are being denied and the gold lead will be further exacerbated. I would also say that regardless of the last couple of plays here, Ning on Gragas with the two kills has Sorcerer's Boots and upgraded jungle item. That is a huge Ooh. amount of burst damage. So with Predator ready, he could go for another kill immediately. And there comes the Predator right now. Vanguard's edge thrown down. Whippo trying to get himself away. Ning still looking to find that flash of the body slam, and it's a killing spree for the IG jungler. Yeah, with a flash advantage, it makes it trivial, honestly. Predator moves speed in there, and he's able to secure it. But he took the kill again. He's not giving these last hits over to the Shy, which may be a diversification that Invictus Gaming would want later in the game. I got to say, I'm happy to see the Assassin AP Gragas come back. <laughs> Season 1 was World Champions Fnatic is a lot of irony that it's the AP Gragas that's keeping them down in game number two. Yeah, maybe some uh, waves to Suchet. Uh, <laughs> 
for the seven, seven years ago. Uh, he does have a trump card in his inventory, and that is the stopwatch. So yes. even though it's very squishy on the Gragas, you can fully commit and have that stasis to rely upon. But the full commitment is happening on the bot side as Hillsan trying to make something happen. They're That's understanding. It. They can't Ooh. lose Pop and Modest. Here we go. And Jackie Love is going to be taken very low now. Ignite coming down. Jackie having to flash away to keep himself alive, but it's Hillsong who's now in some real danger. Balon pops the ulti, looking to go forward yet again. Colin coming out. Reckless oh. trying to absorb the shot. You let one Whoa. bullet go through, and your support dies. Reckless is able to block them, and Hillisong stays alive. Pro status for Reckless definitely <laughs> yes, is sir. confirmed on that particular play. Issue we're seeing, though, is when I understand that if Ning is getting successful ganks top side, they're trying to have some presence bot side. The fact that they're in these cases still trading down means that we need a Broxa special, and we need one soon to actually get the tempo of this game the pace of this game to finally be in the control of Fnatic for yes. what it feels like the first time this series. All right, vision set up here for both teams around this Infernal Drake. And Fnatic have seen this movement, and that's going to be enough to send over the reinforcements. Look at the mini-map. Everybody's coming. The Shy does have teleport ready. Aurelia could join. True Shot Barrage finds its way onto Rookie. Brox is still hanging around. The Drake is still aggroed. He's still very mad. Roxa wants to go back in and start putting damage onto that health bar. Ning still around as well. It's going to be a smite fight for the objective. Brox is the one tanking for now. Scatter the wing coming through. Secured oh! by the side of Invictus Gaming as Whipple is going to be on the front line and Broxa tries to escape. It's now an isolation down onto the Fnatic top laner who gets taken out immediately. And IG find objective and kill as dessert. Two big plays for Ning there. Landing the smite with his barrel as well to secure the Infernal Drake and then the ultimate splitting off Whippo from the rest of Fnatic, allowing another kill. And this one to go over to a main carry for Invictus Gaming. Rookie on Syndra now will have the extra gold. That Drake was begging to be taken. 426 HP was the value we saw. Smite was available for Broxa. It was true from Ning. And then splitting up the team fight with that barrel. It's so much about the supporting cast in this first and second game. And Ning can hold his head up high. Bottom lane, Fnatic's turret has taken a beating. Let's take another look, though. Acer Predator replay at how the Infernal Drake went down. And this Infernal is at least a, well, later on we can come back moment for Fnatic. Even though they have agency over the pit, they lose it out. And the cask here is on point. Yep, able to knock even the tankiest member into the rest of his team to allow very quick work of. And that puts IG in a spot where, once again, they are over 2,000 gold ahead. They've got bonus stat scaling in the form of the Infernal Drake. And as I was saying, that bottom lane turret for Fnatic, a strong breeze will knock that thing over. And this is really important to have this confidence building for Ning. I was talking to Yamato Cannon after uh, some review where we saw the group stage games. Now, quite a lot of Gragas mistakes. However, he said that in the scrimmages that they had versus Invictus Gaming, Ning's Gragas was amazing and pulled out a lot of highlight plays. So we can definitely see both sides of the coin. And right now, he's on the move again already. This top camp. Whippo in some trouble once more. This has happened so many times. It's feeling like deja vu at this point, but the shy will finally grab a kill for himself, and IG are relentless. And we're seeing regular season IG flex on the world final stage. Seeing them try to push up in the mid lane here, Fnatic, but we can see IG coming to punish. Roxa in some trouble, trying to get himself away, but a very nice scout of the week will take him so dangerously low, and Jackie Love will pick up a free 300 gold. This is the IG that did not show themselves against Fnatic. This is the IG that was always there in theory, but in practice in one of these matches, in a must-win best of five, would often go missing. IG are firing on every cylinder, and it's five members strong as mid lane. Rookie in some trouble, Hillisong trying to come in, and make sure they can find the kill here. One more shot will do it, and Caps takes him down. That is a very important gold for the Azir. This is one of the big scaling champions, but can he get out? It's not him they're worried about. It should be that support. The Emperor's Divide going to keep him alive for now, and it's a double kill over to Ning. The Vanguard's Edge will completely cut them down. Ning with the double dunk gets them both with the combination. Five kills on this Gragas now. Woo. You thought he had a lot of damage before. <laughs> He's going to continue. Ning, man, keep building that AP. Keep going for the burst because you're just being a fight decider rather than a facilitator on your own. Let's take another look at how they did it here, uh, starting with the play on the rookie. 
Well, he All right. Caps at the start of this fight. He doesn't actually get the stream of shuffle play at the start. Flash is over. He will be able to register the kill on Rookie. Holds his ult for later. Very good flash there from Caps, getting around the model of Gragas. But now he's going to try and defend Hillisang. You see the ultimate come out, but the shy on Aurelia has already cut behind. Oh. He flashes in it's just dirty. to get an assist. Ning already had taken care of business. That, that is just so hard to deal with. When they can burst you like that, what in the world are you going to do about it? And look at the inventory, gentlemen. You can see the Oblivion Orb for Ning. More magic penetration on this Gragas. You can already see the no magic mantles also coming into fanatic inventory here. They're really worried about that possibility of damage output. The problem is that the shy on Aurelia here is going to be physical damage. Trinity Force has been completed, and Aurelia had such a strong top lane uh, for the majority of this game because that's where Ning was going to get a lot of his kills. That there are going to be threats for dives and, uh, and burst damage on both sides. And let's not forget about Jackie doing physical damage as well. There's so much threat on the side of IG, and they're moving. Over over into the Baron. How do you itemize against burst magic damage, have very strong physical damage, and have damage of your own? At this point in the game, you don't if you're Fnatic. That is the cost here. It's going to have to be conservative positioning. Even if you're Reckless, who usually at two items, is going to be at least able to shrug off some physical damage. So that's why Fnatic will be second to basically every brush, because they have burst engage everywhere to respect. And with that Rift Coward summoned, IG want to once again open up this map. Shelly summoned up, looking for that tier one here in the mid lane. They've got everybody backing her up. Whippo's going to try to clear away the minions. True Shot Barrage makes its way through. The Shy's coming around from behind. Drops one blade for the stun, thinking about going in even further. Instead, going to back away. Scatter the Weak finding its way onto Caps, who does get himself further back. Calling going to be used now by Jackie. They won't find much more. IG just want to disengage this one. Whippo continuing to try to chase. Balong going to be taken down about half, but here comes the counterattack going through now. Whippo taken very low. Jackie Love looking to find the damage. Has the auto attacks. That's the first kill of the fight. Shy still looking to find someone else. Won't be able to land the stun, as now it's Rookie, who will scatter the weak to the wind as a double kill for Jackie. Signals no chance for Fnatic. Brox and Hillisong will run away into the bottom lane, but Ning is in hot pursuit. He finds a hit on a Broxa, who gets himself away on the turret, but will it be enough in time? The shy continues, the stun is down, the double kill is through, and Invictus Gaming are annihilating Fnatic. This is the Invictus Gaming that went 34 and 2 in the LPL, made the finals, and they are making game number two look like it's gonna go the same way as game number one with another Infernal Drake. And no one is lost in the shuffle. This is not a solo lane carry. This is a flying V of death approaching the Fnatic members and find them wanting. Knowing your ranges and hitting that flash scatter of the week was insane from Rookie halfway through this play, but they've got the damage down. We mentioned the table setting of Fnatic wanting to fight behind frontliners. No one's tanky compared to all this damage IG can do, and when the re-engage starts, oh. the pain never ends. Bowland there had a very good interrupt. Look at the chase as after they get Whippo, the tankiest member, Invictus Gaming trying to rush them down. Oh. Rookie was looking for that stun the entire time. Three members lined up against the wall, and he finds it. And it's just a ability to clean up from here. The Shy waiting for his moment. His ability to spread his lead on top lane Aurelia has been the best I've seen from the Aurelia players. We've seen amazing mechanics from people like Smeb. This is the Shy just being able to spread his lead from top to mid, and now bot side as Fnatic sticking in a brush and hoping something can happen. Fnatic want to make a play onto the Shy here, but the thing is, IG has backup hanging around as well, and it looks like nothing's going to happen. Let me tell you, the Fnatic brush, you know, brought into existence by... Very treacherous. Yeah, also by the uh, previous Fnatic teams that were able to do so well at the World Championship. And this is the point in the game where teams turn to strategies like the Fnatic brush, when you're down so heavily in gold. You have to. You're facing incredible odds here, and you have to look for, uh, you know, those brush with control wards and try and find a sneak play to get some kills back for yourself. And Fnatic are trying to find magic resist. They're trying to deal with now Titanic Hydra Durham's fist done after the Trinity Force on the Shy. IG flexing in terms of items and everyone can push up and there's level leads, there's item leads and the control ward line from Fnatic is getting shallower and shallower as IG strangle out the map.
we start to think, you know, with Whippo being zero and six in this game due to the top lane camp, Fnatic do have Soaz, a veteran, on the bench. And we talk about possible champion changes. Whoa. As Shy threatens to dive him again, but there may be even roster moves. Stun comes down on a Hillisong. Over the wall goes Balan. Won't find anything else on that one. Whippo not getting the ultimate down on the Shy, but the damage on the Broxai is huge. Will not be enough, and a nice shutdown goes the way of Whippo. Whippo finally getting some gold for himself here on the Urgot, finds the kill onto the Shy, puts a stop to Invic Invictus Gaming pressure for now. Desperately needed, doesn't manage to claw back much of the gold lead that we can see the Shy is wearing on his pick. About uh, 2,600 gold is the lead for the Aurelia. Again, Fnatic just want to find a way to control some territory. In all of our prep, in all previous games, they just never were blown open. They always stay competitive and have a counter punch on the map when the other team made a good play. Issue here is to be consistently seen. A top lane or a mid lane camp goes successfully for IG, but also the side lanes that aren't being affected by the jungler also falling down. Even though it is a small win for Fnatic, it is exactly what they want. You see that little dent? <laughs> in that's the, the dent of hope. In the dent. red graph, that is what you have to do step by step if you're gonna make an epic comeback like this in one of these games fanatic need to buy time and they've bought a little bit broxa with that play trying to help out Bwi uh, Bwipo. i hope they've got a lot of money stored up on their time credit card kobe because you are <laughs> not in a spot where this is going to be a game you come back from very swiftly they will have to really dig in entrench themselves and hold out for a while to come back in this one the shy continues to just be a massive threat here in the split push situation the stopwatch has still never been needed by ning pointing that out because i know you mentioned the item earlier he's never needed the stasis just yet you can see it also having been purchased for the shy so he can dive in with impunity over on the side of fanatic you've got the banshee's veil for caps to prevent some of that pickoff potential from a straight grogus barrel but this is still a very troubling situation as Hillisong lets out the Glacial Fissure. Bellon still looking for the opportunity to maybe make something happen. Does have the flash up and available here for the Alistar. IG still not afraid, moving into Fnatic territory, clearing out the wards. Rookie throws the orb over the wall, but not gonna find a whole lot with that one just yet. IG continuing to sweep and remove that vision as they make their way back into the mid lane. Rookie picks up some farm, and this team knows how far ahead they are. And they want to be able to use these long-range pick tools that they have at their disposal. Ning, the 505 Gragas with Flash, can initiate on any member that steps out of line. In addition to Rookie, laser-targeted Syndra stuns, there are so many things that make it difficult to navigate through Summoner's Rift for Fnatic, and IG are starting it out. IG starting up the Baron, but Fnatic have vision over the pit. This is your chance to come back into the game if you're Fnatic, if you can punish this and make some kind of a play. But at the same time, it's the Shy on the flank, and you've got to respect how strong that flank could be. IG will be stopped for now. Fnatic happy to do that, but they still have to find some way back into this game. Very smart from IG because they were pushing in and understanding that Fnatic have good wave clear that is happy to hang under inner turrets and just wave clear and hope that items come later. Just inject some gold and what is currently 39,000 gold for Fnatic. If they can keep it this game stay at 50, 55, 60, then Azir will definitely have a lot more threat behind him. The only way you can actually draw the turtle away from the side of Fnatic is to force them to come to Baron. There was a very nice ward placed earlier that I imagine IG wasn't expecting, but you just go back, buy your control wards, and recreate a situation where there's multiple pushing waves and so much Baron threat from IG. Meanwhile, for the underdogs here, Fnatic, they are doing the necessary work to give themselves the possibility of coming back in the game. They put a ton of vision uh, and expended all of their wards around Baron right now to give them a little bit more information as far as when Invictus Gaming are going to pull that trigger. I mean, this is a team that coming into the finals had been down a total of five games at 20 minutes so far at Worlds, and they had still won three out of those five, despite being behind at 20. Now they've been behind two games in a row, and the Shy is looking to make that even more extreme. 
Going in for the solo kill onto Bwipo, missing the Vanguard's edge means the Urgot will get away for now. But another stun comes down. The Shy continues to find the damage. The culling goes out. And Jackie Love shows up just it's to make it a sure thing, as Baron will be started up by Fnatic, seeing IG in the bottom part of the map. We'll see if IG can respond to this. Hillisong is going to be cut, caught out, and the damage is more than enough. Rookie grabs the freebie onto him. Brox and Fnatic need to take down the Baron. It is going to be ultimately secured by Broxa as Rookie goes into the pit to pick up one. Won't be able to find the second. Shut down over to Fnatic. Cap bone down by the Shy and Ning. As now Brox is in some trouble over the wall, goes the Alistar. And Fnatic will be aced as Jackie's in the base. And they're looking to end it right here. And that is a huge, huge sweep for Invictus Gaming. Jackie Love will take down the inhibitor turret. He's going to take down the inhibitor. And the death timers ticking away mean that Whippo and Hillisang will be the two to try and save the game. Oh, but mid lane, they're looking for that second lane of triumph and destruction. Death timers for Fnatic, still short enough that they can get the top laner and the support back alive to stop it. But IG completely dismantled the Baron play despite Fnatic making their move. These are sort of reactive plays from Fnatic that worked so well when they were two to 3,000 gold down in those few games where they fell behind. But this far down, they can't kill the Baron fast enough to be able to get out. At this point, it's only a gold Baron here because they're not going to be able to wear any buffs. The top laner already dead. Four members go down as well. The game may not end, but important to realize that this is the sort of call that worked for Fnatic so well yes. in their road to the final, but did not work because of how the early game has gone for IG. I have so much respect for Fnatic for making that call. You don't win by sitting in your base and waiting for them to take everything all over the map. That was one avenue to get back in. It did not work, but sometimes you have to make those decisions. I think the only way to show respect to the Shai's Aurelia at this point is to maybe not enter lane near him, because every time a minion wave comes in, Just give him he the sees map. it as multiple gap closures to get another solo kill. So around the Aurelia, that's pretty tricky. Pushing up, they don't have the vision to be able to do that. And that just means that Goldie is going to inch further and further ahead for IG. It does feel like you have to have multiple members trailing behind you if you step into the same lane as the Shy right now. How many, now. Kobe? Because I don't think two. <laughs> Probably enough. about five. Well, you would need some with shields because even if you have multiple members, Aurelia still has the burst damage to possibly take someone down with them that you have to be very careful with. Anyways, though, we have the inhibitor down on bottom. That means super minions working for Invictus Gaming there while they continue the siege on top side. Fnatic will continue trying to hold the line top side. The Azir is scaling. Three items completed. Banshee's Veil, Nashor's Tooth, Leandri's Torment. But the question is, is it enough? Iceborne, Muramana, and Blade of the Ruined King also completed over onto Reckless. But the Ezreal is not one of those huge cannons of a carry like you think of, like you get when you think of a Zaya or a Kaisa. And Fnatic now find themselves once again more than 10,000 gold behind, ready to make the impossible defense. Finding a little bit of damage there on the Ning. Hillisan trying to get himself back to safety. Balan once again, always looking on the front, always looking to make those plays. The Shy will continue to provide split push threat there mid as the super minions will do the same thing bottom. Stun comes down through Scatter of the Week onto Hilly and Fnatic will continue to hold the line. Ooh. IG are just firing off everything right now. Moving themselves up towards that tier three turret. Jackie Love taking a little bit of damage, but honestly nothing to really write home about. IG moving themselves back over to mid lane now as the wave moves up. The bottom lane will collide into the Nexus turrets and it means Fnatic cannot defend. Invictus Gaming are on to inhibitor number two. The Shy finds the stun. He'll be shuffled back into the Nexus turrets. That's exactly what Fnatic needs. Fear Beyond Death finds him, but he's still gonna be going into resurrection. Hilly taken very low. The cast comes out. It's Jackie in a rampage. And IG are still managing to find the fight. Jackie Love will go even further. He'll force Fnatic back. And IG will have to retreat for now with no minions over the Nexus turrets. The Shy wants more, but he bites off more than he can chew. And Brox has got the shutdown. The Shy is certifiably insane. <laughs> Re-engages again and again. He could have gotten away, but his hand is still in the cookie jar because the Shy plays on that razor's edge between genius and madness. And so far this world, it's been genius almost every time. His whole arm's in the cookie jar. Look at the man. I mean, he's literally trying to 1v5 under Nexus turrets right now. Relying on the Guardian Angel plus his Flash to come back up at the exact same time as Ning uses the Gragas ultimate to knock away Fnatic was a very 
good escape from them, but Invictus Gaming, out of all of that, they weren't able to take down any other member of Fnatic. And then this is a legit 1v4 attempt <laughs> at the Fountain. Yeah. yeah. He knows he's not coming back from that. Well, you know, it's a one way out of 10 players there definitely would have fully disengaged, <laughs> but the one out of 10 is working out just fine for IG. It's, honestly, this is a squad maturing in front of our eyes. There's a reason that Frost Kieran talks about how this squad in the LPL could never get it done, that wasn't consistent, that wasn't the best team domestically, but internationally growing up in a tournament like this, you take your hats off because, again, a squad performance has come out from IG. And we think about even the history of Invictus Gaming as an entire organization. Don't wait. Older than the LPL. Older than the LPL itself, and yet they only even made the finals a couple of times. Twice. This year was one of those years, and it was off the back of great individual talents. We are seeing the individual talent show up here on the big stage, and they're looking at a very good... Oh! Caps is going to be nearly killed instantly. Forget the nearly. It's unstoppable for Jackie Love, as the enemy mid laner being down is the green light for IG to push for the end itself. Brox is eliminated next. Jackie Love's gonna be dragged in, fear beyond death, a shutdown over to Wimpo. Fnatic make their last stand here. Vanguard's Edge finds its way onto that Fnatic top laner. It's a double kill over to the Shy, and Invictus Gaming will continue their push. A beautiful cast brings Wimpo to his death, as Reckless will nearly fall in the fountain. He can run away, but the Nexus cannot. It'll be brought down, and that's IG taking us to match point. Big smiles from the IG members again, maturing in front of our eyes. If you looked at the facts, if you looked at the tape, Fnatic came in very, very well equipped to deal with IG in this best of five. But it was the intangibles, it was the ceilings of IG that had never been explored when it came to actually performing in the clutch. And while this series is not over, we are seeing some of those ceilings today on the five members. They've done it with a standard tank in the top lane. They've done it with a carry in the top lane now. Scaling marksman, early game marksman. IG seem to be firing on all cylinders. And the scary question is, which one did they wear best, the tank or the carry? Because both of them were about as one-sided matches as can be. So if they can do both of them at this level, Fnatic are going to have to redefine the battlefield, find a way to harness the momentum that got themselves here. Because so far, it has been amazing stuff from IG. You're talking about ceilings, and right now for IG, it looks like the sky is the limit. But for more on how they are one win away from being world champions, let's get a breakdown from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Captain Flowers. The dominance continues for the LPL representatives in Invictus Gaming moving to 2-0 and oh in the series match point already. But this game two was eerily similar to game one in the way that it played out. Granted, we did have some differences in champion select. I think uh, the adjustments were good. We saw a composition that didn't have full AD. We saw some opportunities that Camille got banned. Lee Sin had a better jungle matchup, but I'm still frustrated with the fact that Alistair goes through. Yeah. I think Alistair is just too powerful. Alistair has been great for Balan, but I want to talk about the style from IG. And I'm not talking like play style. Uh, Just styling. They're dancing yeah. on Fnatic right now, and they did it in draft phase as well, because you look at the first game draft, where Fnatic picked the Urgot and the Aurelia. This time, they don't even give them the option with the same counter pick up that Rookie was able to play into caps. That is a gauntlet being thrown down and then just jumped away from when he plays the Azir. Then they swap it up top lane, make Bwipo 06 with the help of Gragas. And the shot, you, you couldn't get him out of the enemy nexus that game. He just yeah. decided to keep going back there. Yeah, he threw a couple kills back, but he had the ground to give in that sense. Game one, all about the attention to the mid lane. Game two, all about the attention to the top lane. And you really have to look at Ning as well. I understand that, you know, the, you have the individual members that are really stepping up. You know, the shy and rookie still doing mm -hmm. that picture perfect performance. But Ning, this is the guy who in 2017 was supposed to be the best jungler in China behind Condi. 2018, he falls back a little bit. He has too much variance right now. Right now, but he's returning to that 2017 oh. form. This is a guy who was an ADC main. He is a role swap into jungle for Invictus game. Ming from RNG, that's who he used to play alongside. <laughs> Three kills in the first 15 minutes. I think he had seven or something kills for the game. Deathless throughout. I mean, one-shotting two people at a time. 
uh, best game he's had at this tournament. I mean, look at these CSD numbers at 15. Just it continues to tell the story yeah. of dominance across the board for IG. That rolls into, of course, another global objective contested by Fnatic, and they lose it out to IG along with the fight to follow. Yeah, this was... It's a tricky fight at the Infernal Drake, right? Because you're trying to stop the opponent team from getting the Infernal Drake, but IG had so many lane advantages. I don't believe we quite have the clip up on the screen yet, but it was definitely an important part I mean, of the game. That's this pretty much a microcosm game. for the Shining <laughs> versus just no one. I was going to say. Because Bill was already <laughs> You've seen everything you need to see, ladies and gentlemen. No, uh, I believe we will be coming in with that play shortly, if possible. But thoughts on the way that this series really broke, or game rather broke down. For me, the series showed me the IG that I saw in scrims. The scrim god IG. Ning mechanically playing very, very well. I think Caps performed good in this game. He had mm -hmm. the, some CS advantages. He picked the Azir, got countered, still did very, very well. And we've... But, Oh, go. I think I'm just shocked by how IG is playing because all of their weaknesses, all the strengths we talk about Fnatic is exactly what IG is showing. They are versatile. Oh. They're making the plays all across the map. They're playing as a unit and it's beautiful. And IG have always had this reputation of being scrim gods for years. Them and Snake Esports from the LPL, but they've never been able to turn that scrim god into the best of fives when it counts. And now for, again, what Papa Smith said, just echoing the sentiment, you are watching a team mature before your eyes in the most important match Ooh. of their lives. Yeah, shiny things in the side. Don't watch the shy miss the ultimate because he still makes a big play at the end of this. And this is the type of confidence that I was worried IG wasn't going to pull out in the world final, right? Dashing in between two turrets when the outermost turret is still alive. Look where IG is in relation to the turrets. And you saw it against KT. Game five, rookie doesn't buy items. You saw yeah. Invictus Gaming have those shaky hands, have that confidence issue come to them. A couple things I want to talk about. Broxa, best performing jungler in the tournament coming into this best of mm -hmm. five, and Ning is making him look terrible. And so questions around how Broxa kind of recovers from this, because he had a good matchup, you called it out, in this game, a better matchup when it comes champion to champion, and yet he couldn't necessarily convert anything. I will say it's kind of hard to say if it's on Broxa or if it's on the laner. Something is not clicking, mm -hmm. however, because every single time Broxa is opposite side the map when Whippo is getting caught out. It's easy to say that's Whippo's fault, but I think it's a communication problem. Either they're not tracking Ning, He's getting better backs, he's having better ganks, but I don't know if it's all on Broxa, but he's in the wrong place. I felt like the jungle pathings of both players were very predictable. Lee Sin got the double crab, which is what's supposed to happen in the match, mm -hmm. so he's supposed to reach level six first. The Gragas timing of the gank on top was something that was very predictable. They did the jungle pathings in opposite directions, and the timing of the jungle spawns is just going to be in a very, uh, this fashion where they kind of mismatch all the time. With Bwipo starting 06, I want to see Soaz in game three. Yes, well, I'll have please. the answer for you. So, there it is, Soaz is in. What's but before it? we talk about game three and match point for IG, we have to recognize Ning once again for NASCAR player of the game. Two in a row already. This is a guy who we've been waiting for him to step up into that spotlight and be the carry, be that glue for those soul laners to really get ahead. And don't let this rewrite history. The last time Ning faced Broxa, he was firmly put in his place. It was Ning that kind of walked from base as Zen Zhao right into Fnatic's hand and, and fed. It was Broxa that was kicking him in the face as Lee Sin. So for Ning to then just switch it up looks beautiful. All right, so here we go. Fnatic on red side, Soaz coming in. What's the answer? Backs against the wall, gotta put three together in a row, Yamato. I think they need to hope that Soaz can bring everyone together because I don't think it was primarily a Bripo issue. I think they need to just recharge, reset, and just come in with these ideas of picking strong matchups because I don't like this Ezreal, don't like this Jin. They Let Reckless yep. play what's good. They can't let Reckless get pinched out. They got to pick his AD carry first phase. We yes. talk about taking the 50-50s and the 60-40s with confidence. That's what IG's doing. Fnatic's going to have to do it plenty if they want to push forward to victory on this for IG. How do they keep Fnatic at arm's length and end it here? They've already got the confidence. They've got the momentum. I say IG, Jio, end them. You can smell the blood. All right, just keep pumping it forward. As the first global sponsor of League of Legends Esports, MasterCard is excited to join the community and bring priceless surprises to MasterCard fans of the day. Making the trip from the U.S., we have Damien, Xavier, and Tyler, who were surprised with the VIP experience in InShot, and they were taken on a backstage tour, took a picture with Shocks, the Summoner's Cup, and received seat upgrades under the floating stage for the opening ceremony. There you go, Jad. They didn't miss the 
the floating stage that you called out. It was a very important part of the ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of this taking place throughout the day today, as you can see, the sun shining bright as these fans took in that VIP experience. Thank you for making the trip all the way internationally to see us here. You've seen them on stage. You can see them on the rift after the show when the new KDA skins are officially live. You can pick up your set and participate in the after party event when the championship concludes. As we go to break, though, here's a look at the KDA's debut single, Pop Stars. The full video will be available on YouTube.com slash League of Legends. Synergy of brute strength. Born of elite core power. To thrive under pressure. In the most hostile conditions. And built to overclock. Prepare for combat. Go forth and conquer.